Welcome to tonight's episode of Public Domain Theater. I've been getting some feedback from some people who have watched the show and they love it. They may be family, friends, and people who have contacted me on Facebook and YouTube, but hey, a compliment is a compliment and I really do appreciate it. But I've got to give a special shout out to my niece Asia and her family who sent me this photo. That's her son, Cole, watching Destroy All Planets. Hi Cole, if you're watching tonight's movie, The Cape Town Affair, Please explain the plot to me. Before I get started with this week's film, I'd suggest that if you get seasick easily, you may want to get some Dramamine right about now. The opening credits are a bit shaky. This 1967 spy film starring Jacqueline Bisset, James Brolin, and Academy Award winner Claire Trevor commits the unforgivable sin of being slow-paced and confusing. Brolin plays Skip McCoy, a well-dressed pickpocket who steals Bissett's wallet in the film's opening scene. Like the guy in the $4,000 suit is going to need some extra cabbage? Come on! He's not after the money. He's after the microfilm. Even in 1960s South Africa, everyone knows that spy films have to have microfilm and a bone to pick with the Russians. I have a bone to pick with the filmmakers. Why did you have to muffle all the dialogue? You've got three genuinely talented actors. Why were you afraid to have them speak clearly? Was it so the audience wouldn't be able to tell that they're not speaking with South African accents? It would also seem that the only reason that Claire Trevor was cast as Sam, the world's first and only information slash necktie salesperson, is that because comedian Phyllis Diller was booked at Caesars through August. Still, its two main stars are pretty to look at, and the soundtrack has some nice, upbeat, kicky moments, even though it's as erratic as an iPod shuffle with ADHD. Get your popcorn and your soda, make note of the nearest emergency exit, and switch off your cell phone or pager. Public Domain Theater proudly presents Claire Trevor, Jacqueline Bissett, and James Brolin, starring in The Cape Town Affair. Hopefully, the Dramamine will take effect in three, two... One.
What happened? I'm not quite sure. Her. I'll call the division, we'll see ID officer. CIO said you were on your way and in a bit of a rush. He was right about that. Here's your man now. I've already told him to clear his desk. Warrant officer to proceed. Captain Herring of security branch. Captain, appreciate the cooperation. More. Glad to oblige. We're not very keen about things like this in Cape Town. Good luck. This way, Captain. So you're the donkey. If I met a warrant officer that wasn't Captain. Get it from the top, get it from below, and always in the middle. Always carrying the workload. What would we do without you? All right, sir. Care to add to the load? At your service. I'm looking for a pickpocket. A take? What's his name? I don't know. We're in trouble. He stole a wallet from a woman's purse on a bus this morning. You know what he looks like? Yeah. We're in business. Do proceed him. Send me the file on the takes. Yeah, as soon as possible. I got the impression from the lieutenant you were after some commies. This is part of it. The woman whose purse he picked up been passing military information onto them. She was on her way to a contact when this happened. Do you know who the contact is? No. I've got a line on everybody else in the setup except him. He just happens to be the top man. That is a rotten break. He's the mover. We do know that as soon as he can lay hands on the film she was carrying, He'll fly it out of the country. How can you be so careless to get your purse picked? I told you before, I'm sorry. You've got to find him. In Cape Town? Hmm. I never saw him before. I barely had a look at him. You know what was on that film? Film? Yes, film. A new patent for chemical formula. The most important formula we've ever had. Candy, we've got to get that... What are you getting so excited about? Because we can't get another copy of it. Joey, you're talking as though it were hot. Candy, this is big business, cutthroat business, and I'm in a spot. That delivery was my responsibility. I told you before, I'm sorry, but there's nothing I can do about it now. You just have to tell your boss I have my bag. Now, 
wait a minute. If you're a smart girl, you can figure out a way to find him. Dewey, he was a pickpocket. What do I know about people like that? And let's put it this way. You probably know people who do. You've knocked around enough. Are you going to throw that in my face again? Candy. I'm sorry. Believe me. I'm so sorry. I need you. I need your help. You know what he looks like. If I had your contacts, do you think I'd be begging like this? Maybe I can get you a lead. Candy, if you can find this bloke for me, I'll never bother you again. All right, Joey. I'll do what I can. Here's another bet. Try this. How long do you think it'll take? The main delay will be getting the photos from Pretoria, the Criminal Bureau. If we don't have, they will. Ah, there must be a quicker way. There's one possibility. I'm not exactly kosher. Well, let's not be too delicate. The enemy isn't. No harm trying, then. Maybe Sam can get a little speed into this. Who's Sam? Long time no see, eh? Hello, Sam. Hey, this is the creep with me and didn't happen. Honey, that tie. It's gotta go. I got a polka dot number for you that just is made for your personality. We gotta have some quick action, Sam. <sighs> Why is everything around here always an emergency? Say, this has nothing to do with murder, has it? No. Okay. No killers in my book. I'm just in this business long enough to fatten up this kitty. How's she doing? Just great. I got almost enough to buy the plot and the stone. You lose that, you won't have to worry about the stone. It'll be a pauper's grave. That's not one of your funnier jokes. No, I only meant you ought to be more careful where you put it. Yeah, can you think of a better place, kid? Listen, let me tell you something. If I should wind up in a pauper's grave after all this, it would kill me. Now, I got a real nice spot picked out in Baltimore, in the private paid-up section, too, with the most gorgeous view of Table Mountain, even better than on a postcard. Well, so it's not murder, what is it? We're looking for a take that lifted a girl's wallet on the bus. The bus? Yeah, well, don't you have a pigeonhole in there? Trying to save time. We thought you may have a lead, and who's been working the buses in the last 24 hours? Oh, yeah, I might know a couple have been stooping to that lately. Then where are you, the victim's father? No, he's from security. A lousy dresser. Oh, boy. Mister, I got a tie here with stripes that just might give you some class. Now, did you get a good look at the picker? Yeah. Tall, dark haired. Yes, tall, dark haired. You must be kidding. I mean, uh, there are a dozen I know like that. Now, it's the technique that counts. Each one has his own trademark. Say, will you look at that? Is that not great? It's yours from one rand. Sold. Right. Now, tell me, mister. It's Captain. Oh, well, uh, Captain, uh, when did this happen? A couple of hours ago. Uh-huh. And what kind of a bus was it? Double-decker or single? Double-decker. What route? Adderley Street from the foreshore. Uh -huh. Was he standing to her left, or to her right, or behind her? He was in front of her first, then he moved to her right. Was he carrying a newspaper? Yeah. Rolled or folded? Folded, I think. You think? What do you mean? Say, what kind of a security book is this? Captain, you've got to be sure, like I said before. Each one has his own way of operating. All right, all right. It was folded. It was folded. On the top side, was it the front page or the classified ad? Classified. Was he a southpaw? No, he used his right hand. He carries a paper in his left. Did you see him close the purse? Yeah. And did he hold the paper like this when he closed it? Yes. 
and give her a little bump at the same time. I know. Captain, I wonder if you mind waiting outside. Well, thanks very much. I'll, I'll just be a moment. Now, look, Sam, we've got to work fast. We're not going to go through all that again, are we? Listen, am I personally responsible for the price of fish and chips? Is it my fault that the cost of living has gone up? Here, in my book, as of today, the price of knacking a take is 35 rand. 35 rand? Yeah. I told you before, we don't even have a fund for this. Spoken like a true donkey. You mean all along you've been paying me out of your millionaire's salary? Isn't that sweet of you? 25 rand. Take it or leave it. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll give you the names of four takes who fit this job. And I'll bet you 27 rand and 50 cents that one out of the four has nabbed this James Wallace. Bet you 27.50, you're wrong. Yep. I don't even have a lead on him. I didn't know he was up. I'll check. Oh, you don't know. I thought you knew everything about everybody. I know how he operates. He's held up somewhere. He always did have a taste for living in out of way places. This is hard to find. Well, that's pretty smart. It's going to take you a long time to run him down. It might even take you a week. What are you angling for? A side bet? Every little cent has a meaning on its own. So it happens I haven't a cent left. So happens, I know where he's shacked up. That was part of our original bet. Oh, no, you don't, Cookie. No, you don't. <laughs> I've no more time, Sam. What are you stalling for? Next time I'll give you odds, two to one. You promise? Promise. You got yourself a deal. Very happy to have made your acquaintance. I want to give you my card.
Bird? Here he is. It's a visit or a pickup? Both. Warren's office at Duplessis he wants to see you down at Carlton Square. You go with my bird. I'll stick around. Why not? Still hoarding all your loot, Skip. Have a look around. You're getting paid for it. Want a beer? No, thanks. How is the donkey these days? You won't find any change in him. Good. It's the way I like it. No electricity around here, but the beer is always cold. Want one, my bird? Double C is waiting. All right, let's go. There's the opener in case you change your mind. Oh, period. Just one thing. After you shake my place down, put it back the way you found it, huh? Come on, my bird. Suspension and three months' pay. Didn't do much on my record either. I'd like to see him alone, Captain, if you don't mind. Well, just so long as we get what we want. I'll be in the squad room. Stick. Now, it's one week, and already those fingers have got to work the bus circuit. Here's the wallet you lifted from the girl. I don't like being lumbered on a trumped up charge. Back it up or drive me back to my shack. I'll drive you back in a hearse if you don't get that kink out of your mouth. I ought to have you deported. Now, look. You've been donkey of this squad long enough to know that a bloke with my rating wouldn't pull anything like that on a bus or anywhere else. Ha! You always will be a two-cent take. When they pick you up in the gutter dead, your hand will be in some drunk's pocket. You were spotted lifting that wallet. Uh, only amateurs are spotted. Three convictions. What else do you think you are? Right now, clean as a whistle. It's my word against one of your comedy cops around here. That girl was carrying TNT and it's gonna blow up right in your face. What girl? I would have ran that grin right down your teeth. Go on, slug me. Go on, I'll make a bigger stink than last time. I'll see you hit the backyard without pay for a whole year. Go on, slug me, we're all alone here. What's the matter, are you nervous? Come on. Captain. Oh, I need some help. Is that it? All we want is the wallet. If you got rid of it, tell us. If you toss the film away, tell us where. Who's he? None of your business. Answer him. Now, wait a minute. I told you before I'm clean. Since I got out, I wouldn't touch a cent if I were lying in the street. Word of honor. Why don't you haul that girl down here to identify me? It's my word against her. You're wrong. It's your word against mine. You see, I saw you close that purse. All right, so it's your word. But you have to nail the goods on me, mister, and I'm clean. Go on, fan me. Give me the works. That film you stole had government information on it, classified. We've been working on this for over a month. And just as we were about to grab a top red agent, you stepped in. Can't you understand how important this is? All we want is your cooperation. 
charges against you will be dropped. Isn't that so? You know how much I'd like to make this rap stick. What he's got to do is far more important. You boys are bloody well talking in the wrong corner. I'm just a bloke keeping his hands in his own pocket. If you refuse to cooperate, you'd be as guilty as if you deliberately sold out to your country. Are you waving the flag at me? Nah. All I know is you sent me up three times. I didn't lift that film, and you can't prove I did. And if I said I did, you'd slap that indeterminate rap across my teeth no matter what promises you made. So save all that patriotic eyewash for somebody else. Do you know what treason means? Who cares? Answer him. Is there a new law that says I have to listen to lectures? I did. Get him out of here. Get him out of the building. Hey, what have you boys been feeding the donkey lately? Take it easy, Pete. Put a tail on McCoy. The mango you gave him. Put it on my account. Your account? What's new in merchandise, Mohammed? And I don't mean pawpaws. Somebody told me De Villiers' camera shop on Castle Street got cleaned out the other night. That should teach him to put in a better alarm system. I don't suppose you'd be handling anything like, uh, a machine for showing uh, family pictures. What size? Maybe, Mr. McCoy, uh, I can help. Not that the villiers had such a fine piece of equipment as this. I mean, I've had it here quite a while. That's why you could carry it away at a greatly reduced price. <laughs> you see, uh, I need the space. 
See that? Now. Yeah, I'd like to see what the point is. Never had such a fine piece of equipment as this. How do you work it? Work it? There's child's play to work this way, I tell you. There's nothing to it. It's as simple as A, B, C. You take this plug here, you plug it in there, and so. Now you switch this on there, and you put your film in there, it's a slide, and you focus. Have you got any fun? You better be getting back to your grapefruit, hadn't you? Listen, you give me the fella when I give you a demonstration. Now look, Mohammed, somebody could come in off the street and steal you blind. <laughs> Not me. I got the bill. And it works well. How'd you like a projector, Mr. McCoy? Well, I was going to discuss that with you. Frankly, I was hoping for something a little better. That's for the kid's mango. Be around, Mohammed. Who told you to ask me? The rack boy at the pool hall. Who told you to ask him? That new teacher at the karate school. Why didn't you go to the cops in the first place? Look, 20 rand. If you'll tell me where I can find Lightning Louie. Put it on the table. Not until you tell me. I'm Lightning Louie. Then why did you tell me your name was Espinosa? Look, Blubbermouth, you better give me back that money or there's going to be trouble. Lum! What's my name? North side or south side? My north side name. Lightning Louie. For another 20, I'll give you the name of the squeak that knows everything about dates. I hope you bust. Two forty one Long Street. One flight up, top of the stairs. Her name is Sam. A woman. Tell her I sent you. Lum, bring us another order of chow fun and chow sweet bow. Lightning Louis. Are you Sam? 
Yes? I need your help. I hear you're the best pickpocket squeak in the business. Say, what are you trying to do, insult me or something? I am a solid citizen, brought up to report all injustices to the police authority. But you do get paid for it. Well, the citizen has to live, don't they? I'm looking for the man who lifted my wallet on the bus this morning. Oh, so you are the babe. What do you mean by that? Well, word gets around. You know, one picker talks to another. What was in the wallet? Something personal. She was pretty earring. How personal? What difference does it make? He didn't know what he was stealing when he took it. He was only interested in the money. How do you know? <gasps> Say, have you got a boyfriend? Why? Because you ought to buy him a tie. I happen to carry a complete line of personality neckwear at bargain prices. Look at that. No, thank you. I told you before. I need your help. Now, do you want to do business or not? Got any happy money? Happy money? Hmm. Money that'll make me happy. How happy? Fifty rand and I'll throw in this gorgeous necktie. Your time looking. Want a beer? I want my wallet. What wallet? The one you took from my bag this morning. Oh, now, do I look like a take? Yes. Wipe your face off. How much did Sam get out of you? If I know Sam, I estimate you shelled out about 50 rand to find me. Sam's all right. She's got to eat. She certainly sells crummy ties. Tell me, did you throw it away? Huh? Mr. McCoy, I have to find that. Why? It's no good to you or anybody else. No? Oh. Oh, what's the matter? 
Did I bust something? I'm sick. Well, let's sit down. Let's see. Let's find out the trouble. Oh, that's where it hurts. I'll take care of that. Now you just take it easy. All right, now. Let's have a small dose of straight talk. There was some film in it. You mean you shook down my joint just to find some film? You got me in a terrible mess when you took it. What kind of a mess? Are you working for some blackmailer? Oh, no, Mr. McCoy. Nothing like that. They're pictures of my brother, Tommy, on his new farm in Natal. My mother's waiting to see them. Oh. Why didn't you get to the cops, though? Well, the fact is, I got into a little trouble with them. And it would kill my mother if she... You know what I mean? Of course I do. You feel better? Does Bear always do this to you? What kind of trouble did she get into with the cops, baby? Oh, a girl makes mistakes. Hmm. I was only asking because... Because why? Am I talking too much? Why talk? How much is your brother worth? What do you want, blood? I just want to make your old lady happy, that's all. You do have it. But you see, doll, there might be another little old lady looking for pictures of her boy. I just have to make certain it's your brother. Tommy. I'll tell my mother. You do that. Miner's boots? You're waking up half the waterfront. You're not losing any time, are you? Neither are you. Did you make a deal with her? Go on, drum up a charge. Throw me in. You've done it before. Locking you up isn't gonna help. You're sitting on a hot rock, aren't you? I like to see you jump. Look, I'd rather chop my leg off and say what I've come to say, but I've got to push personal feelings aside. My lieutenant has promised to take me to the Divisional Criminal Investigation Officer, the DCIO himself. I'm going to ask him to tear up your record. <laughs> A nice fat bill of health for that strip of film. That's what I'm going to ask him to do. <laughs> your idea, huh? You mean your DCIO's idea and all the big wheels from here to Pretoria? All right, Skip. I won't push it. But remember one thing. If it's the last thing I do, no matter what happens in this commie setup, I'm going to see that you get it. The full coat. Right up your ears. Those charges stick and you're going to be pushing time for the rest of your life. Hey, donkey. Save the taxpayers some money. Don't plant a bug in here because I'll find it and grind it into powder. Bye-bye. Did you find him? Has he got it? Yes, he's got it. But he knows what's on it. 
A professional knack took me for 50 rand. She calls herself Sam, operates in Long Street. She sells ties at the front. What do you mean he knows what's on it? All well, the way he hung on to it. He's been around. Did he uh, say what's on the film? He's taking you down, that tells the story. You uh, didn't mention my name. Oh, of course not. Does he know where I live? No, Joey. I found him for you, didn't I? And he's got what you want. So I'll give you his address, and you go over and make a deal. No. <laughs> I, uh, I can't take the chance. Well, I like that. You can't take a chance, but you send me. Well, it's different for you, Candy. He might have been hired for the job. You mean he knew what he was stealing? Yes. Then why didn't he contact you? It doesn't make any sense. Well, he might be playing both ends against the middle, don't you see? No, I don't. But maybe there's something about that film you haven't told me, huh? What do you mean by that? You tell me. There's nothing complicated about it. If he knew I was after the film, it'd increase the price, that's all. That's why I've got to keep out of it. And that's why you'll have to go back to him. And do what? If I haven't already done. Well, what I meant was... Uh... Oh, I know exactly what you mean. Well, for your information, he hit me on the jaw. So you can forget all about me going back to him. Not that I don't appreciate your fine compliments. Candy. I didn't mean it the way you took it. You just don't understand. Then why don't you, for once, put it so that I can understand? All right. Here's 500 rand. Give him 50. If he holds out for more, give him another 50. The rest is yours. Now, is that something you can understand? It helps. Just see you come back with that film, Candy. I'll wait for you at the office. Hey, I'm out here. We call this a play area. Come on down. <laughs> your old lady. She couldn't come. Oh, that's too bad. Did you bring the cabbage? I just can't figure you out. Don't try. Let your old lady do all the figuring. How come a nice fellow like you goes around picking handbags on buses? Angel, the last time I worked the buses, I was in short pants. The last time was this morning. Unless you've got a couple of extra licks in between. Really, how many times have you been caught with your hand where it doesn't belong? I've been tapped a few times. All part of the business. That side of the ledger. You want a smoke? Thanks. I once knew a fellow. I mean, I heard about a fellow who was in prison several times. In Kronstadt, I think it was. And the next time they arrested him, they put him in Pretoria Central. And nobody ever heard of him again. That's the way it goes. It's gonna happen, all right. You mean it could happen to you, say, for uh, stealing my wallet this morning? Uh -huh. Nothing happens when I'm concentrating. You're a dope taking chances like that. How much money do you think people carry around? How's the chin? Better. Give. You've got fingers like an artist. Mm-hmm. Soft and smooth. 
And in my business, I have to keep them that way. And when they stay empty, they get nervous. Come on. How did you get to be a pickpocket anyway? How did I get to be a pickpocket? How did you get to be what you are? Don't get angry. Don't ask stupid questions. Things happen, that's all. I only ask because I'm interested in you. How much is it worth to you? What are you pushing me for? You came here to buy, didn't you? You're not going to raise the ante by smearing my lipstick. Why kiss me back? Because I really like you. How much did you bring, honey? I don't want to talk about it now. How much? A hundred. Now you tell that commie I want a decent return for that film and I want it in cash tonight. What are you talking about? You tell me. You people are supposed to know all the answers. This is 500. Well, it's still a drop in the bucket, doll, baby. Tell you what? I don't even... Come on, drop the axe. So you're a red. Who cares? Your money's as good as anybody else's. Now you get your stern up that gangway and tell your old lady what I want. A red? Beat it. You think I'm a red? Me? I don't think anything. I know. I know what you're after. I know what it's worth. So help me. I don't know what you're talking about. You know, all right. But what you don't know is that when I lifted your wallet, I was pulled in by the theft squad. You know how hard it is to spot my fingers in action? It can't be done. But a guy did. You know how he did it? He was watching you. And that bloke you were supposed to pass the film to, you don't know anything about him either, do you? He's still waiting. He's itching for it. Keep the way I feel about you. I wouldn't lie to you. You've got to believe me. I gotta believe nobody. I'll do business with a red, but I don't have to believe one. I get out of get here! My... And tell your old lady I'm shaking you reds down for 25,000. That's the price. Now get going. <laughs> he gave me and me falling for it. He took the whole 500 right out of my purse. Do you know what he wants? 25,000 rons. 25,000 rons for that film. Did you ever hear of anything so crazy? You know why? You know what he told me? He, he's crazy. He said I was a commie. Did you ever hear of such a thing? All right. So he wants to shake you down, but to call me, you, all of us, come in. Sit down. And do you know what else he told me? Sit down! You should have taken care of him yourself. You know I couldn't take the chance. I know. You're getting paid to take them. Security is not interested in all this confusion. I'm speaking of our security, not theirs. Delivery must be made tomorrow night. Where does he live? I know what kind of a guy he is. He'll kill you. Where does he live? Even if you kill him. 
They'll hang you. You know that. I'll find him myself. All right, Joey. I'll tell you. Eighteen Cassini Street, off Somerset Road, in the basement. I didn't know who to talk to. I didn't know where to go, which way to turn. I... Why didn't you go to the cops? You think they'd believe me if I told them I didn't know what I was passing? Who would believe I was so naive, so stupid? Would you? Do you know what they do to people who hand out government secrets? Yeah. Sam, you've got to promise me, Sam. When Joey asks you, please don't tell him where Skip lives. Well, how is this Joey going to ask me? I mean, he doesn't even know where I live. I told him. Oh, well, then why isn't he here? I gave him a phony address for Skip. He's out looking for him now. <gasps> Jeez, you better warn Skip. Nothing cares. I won't believe a word I tell him. Now he's crawled under your skin, too, huh? Oh, he's shifty as smoke, but I love him. You've sold him up. Listen, honey, they would have caught him sooner or later. You see, it's like this. Some people sell pineapples, I sell information. There's nothing. Who ever heard of a woman hawking neckties anyway? But that way I stand out, right? So they can reach me in a hurry. Ah, oh, Skip knows how I have to live. He's not sore. Sure, he gets hot under the collar once in a while if I sell him short. But you wouldn't sell him to a combi? Hey, what do you think I am, an informer? trouble finding me. Everybody in town knows where I live. Ah, oh, come on, love. I didn't pinpoint you, honest. I gave the donkey four pickers. But that creep that was with him, he's bringing your picture like a shot. I see. Confidentially, it seems like you're going to act How much did you make on the deal, Sam? <laughs> now, love, don't be so. His name would have caught up within a couple hours anyway. All I did was chop down the time a little. Doing your civic duty. Who's gunning for me, Sam? Say, what's with you anyway? Are you playing some kind of music with the commies? Are you waving the flag, too? Listen, I've known you since you were a kid, and I always thought you were a regular kind of a crook. I certainly never figured you for a louse. Stop. You're breaking my heart. Even in our crummy business, you've got to draw the line somewhere. That's good. You know that, that doll you took? She, she's all right. She stuck her chin way out for you. I really think that she's... Hmm. Hey, you all right? Yeah. Yeah. You look tired. You better go home. Okay. Go on. Beat it. Okay. Right. I, re I 
Time. You look very tired. Can I do anything? No, not a thing. See it, Maxine, huh? to a girlfriend of mine. Maybe I forgot. Yes, a hundred. To remember. It's pet, like a dog. Five hundred. Wow, what's this block made of? Diamonds? to do, blow off my head? Ask a silly question, you get a dopey look. Why are you holding back on me? You'd sell anybody for buttons. Could be, but not to you, mister, not to you. Listen, I'm running out of time. You haven't got a lot of time. <laughs> When I came in here tonight, you saw an old clock running down. I'm tired. I've had it. But close as I am to a fancy funeral, it's not worth it if I have to do business with dregs like you. I happen to know what you're after. What's that? I happen to know that you commies are after some film that doesn't belong to you. 
Maybe you've just talked yourself into an early grave. What else do you know? What else do I know about coming? Nothing except I don't like them. Looks like I'm not going to get my shiny earth after all, doesn't it? Big man, aren't you? Big, strong, brave man with a gun in your hand. Go on, show the world how great you are. Dirty, low down, no good. Say it! Hey, what is this? Put your hand up. Turn around. Oh, the cops. For a minute there, I thought it was a stick-up. No weapon. Of course not. I never used a gun in my life. Turn around. Hold your hands up. Hey, wait a minute. Lieutenant Lawrence, murder and robbery squad. Murder and robbery? Let's go. Take it easy, will you? You can't pull me in like this. What's the charge? I got a right to know. We're pulling every pecker in Sam's book. When'd you see a lot? You mean Sam got it? Tommy shot her head off. What? But then... Hang on to him. Car 12, Tommy. Car number five. Sergeant Biff, the security branch. Your driver just told me what time it happened. Skip McCoy's not your man. Well, my orders are full to bring him in. I've been here the whole time watching him. Have your commanding officer check with Captain Herrick of security. I'll do that. Where is she? At the government mortuary. But she won't be there for long. What do you mean? They have to hold on to her until somebody claims her. Well, who's going to claim her? She'll complete the morning load to the pauper section at Walter Marta. I understand. Right. Vermeulen, take them off. Let's go. Somebody's asking for 183. You got a clearance? I've got the clearance form. All right, come in. Sam Williams. What are you going to do with him? I'm going to bury her. Thank you.
Skip. Sam's dead. She was shot in the head last night. It's in the papers. What are you doing here without the cabbage? I went to see her last night. I begged her not to tell Joey where you live. She wouldn't sell you, Skip. She really loved you. Who's Joey? Your old lady? You're not listening to me. Is Joey your old lady? Yes. But I told her about him. I, I knew he'd find her. You think he did it? I'm certain of it. He was ordered to find you. I was there. I saw him take the gun. Honest, Skip, I didn't think he'd kill her. Shut up! It's my fault. I didn't know. Honey, I'm sorry. I didn't mean it. I was thinking of Sam. You just never planned to go that way. I've been out all night, walking the street. I didn't know where to go. And when I read about it in the paper, I had to tell you about it. I had to tell you how it happened. All right. All right. You've been so wrong about me, Skip. I had nothing to do with it. All right. I see the whole picture now. Where does he live? He's got a gun. I'll let the cops handle him. Where does he live? One twelve Queen Victoria Street, flat nineteen. That's it. And he better have that twenty-five thousand ready. Skip! 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 I'll see you later. Skip. has anything to do with Skip McCoy. Here's the film you've been looking for. The film the commies wanted. Skip told me to bring it to you. Skip told you? Yes. I came here in a cab. I think I ought to tell you I was followed. I followed you. The film was marked all right. Do you sit down there, please? Just relax. Answer a few questions. How did you contact Skip McCoy? A lady called Sam. Did your friends have anything to do with her murder? Yes. You say that under oath? I'll tell you everything I know under oath. Did you know what was on that film when McCoy lifted it from your purse? Listen, officer. I didn't say anything about anybody lifting anything from my purse. I came here to help you. That's the way Skip wanted it. He's been fighting something inside him. Something decent, trying to crawl out. Well, what's the difference anyway why he sent me? I'm here with the film, that's enough. How long have you known Joey was a communist agent? I didn't know, until Skip told me. I'm telling you the truth. You do want to help us fight communism, don't you? Why, Skip sent me to help you. What I'm going to ask you to do might be dangerous. I 
I'm here, aren't I? Go back to Joey with this film. Carry out the original plan. Whether you make delivery or Joey does, doesn't matter. We'll jump when that film passes to the man we want. Phone Joey and tell him you've got the film. I told you there's a lot of difference between a traitor and a pip poet. You want a bit? Hello, Joey. This is Candy. Candy? Candy? Joey? Where are you? I'm in the bar. Where are some seats on the table in the living room? Come out of there. Did you hear me? I said, come out of there. Are you coming out or am I coming in there? Candy? I told you to... Can't you give me a minute? What's the matter with you anyway? That phony address you gave me. What's the idea? I had to. Why? Because I didn't want you to kill him. I didn't want you to hang. Where have you been all night? With him. I'll get the truth out of you if I have to beat you. What have you been up to? What are you trying to pull on me? Go on, beat me if you don't believe me. But I've got the film. How? You wanted 25,000 for it. How did you do it? How did you do it? How do you think? It was your idea, wasn't it? Anything's trouble for the commies. There's a frame missing. Are you in this with him? Where does he live? Where does he live? Where does he live? <laughs>
Still alive. Get an ambulance. He's in this building somewhere. We'll cover every floor, every staircase. Sergeant Baker's here, security. Send an ambulance. A woman's been shot. The address is 914 Beach Road, flat number 83. And notify the murder and robbery squad. He's not on the roof, nor down below. Both of you, check the broom cupboards on every floor. Gentlemen, you were called together here this afternoon. Yes, Captain. Gibbs didn't make it, sir. He died a few minutes ago. What about the girl? She's off the critical list. Well, I've had a general alarm put into effect. The ghost squad and every squad in the service is on this case. Photographs of the man have been circulated right throughout the city. I want you officers to inform your men that just as soon as this uh, Joey is recognized, he's to be followed, no matter what happens. Then I want an arrest. In many he passes that film. Why are they taking so long? Are you sure they went to find him? Yes, Why are they taking so long? Please call, call the police. Please call the police. Go see if he's coming, please. You all right? Joey found a frame missing. That's why I had to tell you before he did. I play everything smart. But you... Clubbing me. Taking that film. Get rid of it, Skip. Get rid of it. I'm sorry I spoiled your one big play. 
I know it sounds corny to you, but I'd rather have a live pickpocket than a dead traitor. And I'd rather have you talk without a twist. I told you, Skip, I wouldn't lie to you. Does Joey know where I live? Your address was in my purse. That's why I wanted the cops to get to you before he did. Please, Skip, don't go back to your track. Did Joey kick your face? Why? Because I wouldn't tell him where you lived. Take a look around the deck. Yes. Nothing. Funny he'd leave his light on here. That's if this is his place. It's what the address gave. You should have gotten in touch with me earlier. I couldn't take a chance since they're off my back. I told you that. There was nothing else I could do. You haven't got much time left. You'd better deliver what you've got. Maybe it'd be better if you turned it over. I I'll wait here for McCoy. You leave the car for me, so that doesn't give you much time. And Joey? Yes? Tell him I'll meet him at the airport with the other train. But not to wait. Thank you. 
There's a frame missing, Charlie. <laughs> There's another chap up on the second floor, John. You like him even better. Hello, Duplessis. How's the donkey? Still cracking, huh? You know, I didn't need an escort from the clink back to this rat trap. It's too bad you couldn't make that charge stick, huh? Let's have my release paper. Thanks a lot. So, baby, you look as good as new. Come on, let's get out of here. Well, aren't you even going to say goodbye? Wait a minute. I had you right where I wanted you, with a gun in your pocket. An absolute cinch for an indeterminate sentence. That's right. What are you going to do about it? Always will be a two cent purse snatcher. I give you 30 days before I pick you up again with your hand in someone else's pocket. You want to bet? <laughs> Mom, I got my headgear on. <clears throat> oh. Um, well, there it is. The Thomas Crap, I mean, the Cape Town Affair. <sighs> you know, despite the fact that the acting was bad and the pacing was lackadaisical and the plot was borrowed from many other spy movies, it wasn't that bad. It makes total sense that Candy would fall in love with Skip, the man who robbed her. <laughs> it's pretty common, actually. I can't tell you how many times I've fallen in love with someone just because they've stolen my wallet. The joke ends up being on them, though. All they end up with is torn movie stubs and a TJ Maxx gift card I can't seem to get rid of. Well, anyway, I hope the drama mean worked. If you'd like to leave me a message, suggest a movie to show, or just plain say hello, you can do just that at the Public Domain Theater Facebook page. Twitter, we're at Cherokee Jack, or on YouTube, just look for FL Warmer. It's like fly warmer without the Y. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Paul Fish, and I'm going to get back to my nap. Oh.
Oh. Oh wow, I can see in the monitor there the two different cameras. <laughs> but I've got to give a special sh I need to, I need to get a special drink of water. Hi Cole. If you're watching tonight's movie, The Cape Town Affair, please explain the plot to me. Can we start over? The air conditioning kicked on. Commits the unforgivable sin of being slow-paced and confusing. Roland Pen... Oh. Roland Pen... Before I get started with this week's film, I'd suggest that if you get seasick easily, can you hear those guys in the background? <laughs> 